Hey everyone, I'm Zach Brown, and today I wanted to pull out kind of an old video that I recorded a while back talking about whether your church should shoot video in 4K or 1080p. This video is actually taken from a larger in-depth training course called Church Video Made Simple, and it's specifically designed for church leaders who have no prior experience shooting video with DSLR or mirrorless cameras. It takes someone who's never used a camera before and turns them into someone who knows how to use their camera and how their settings affect their image and how to get great looking results out of their camera. Anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the video after watching the last video you may be wondering if 4k is a bigger resolution size and gives me a higher image quality then why would i want to shoot in 1080 at all that's actually a great question and one that i want to fully break down the pros and cons of in this video right now there are times to shoot in 4k but it's not as necessary as you may think so here are my top reasons on why you should shoot 1080 instead of 4K. First off is the visual difference. To the untrained eye, most people would never know of the difference between a 1080 or a 4K image. Plus, most of the screens people use don't even output in 4K. So a 4K image on a 1080 screen most of the pixels aren't even showing up. Now, is there even a visual quality difference when shooting in 4K? Of course there is, but that difference may not be worth it for the reasons I'm about to get into. Next up is the file sizes. If a 4K image is almost four times as big as a 1080 image, then you bet that the file sizes are gonna be larger too. You can save a lot of room on your hard drives long term if you shoot in 1080. Trust me, there's nothing worse than dropping a bunch of money on hard drives instead of spending it elsewhere because you're desperate for the space. The next reason is faster editing. The larger the file size, the slower it will actually play back on your editing machine. Unless you have a really powerful machine, you're likely going to experience frame skipping during playback. You minimize that with a smaller file size. Now, this isn't a huge deal, but something to be aware of, as this can really bog down your editing machine and your project if it contains a lot of footage. So now with all that said, when would be a good time to even shoot in 4K? Well, if your camera has the option, here are some situations where I would advise to shoot in 4K. First situation is if your camera's 1080 is subpar in quality. What do I mean by this? Well, try to stick with me here. This is something that I didn't know about because not many people talked about it. I won't go into all the tech nitty gritty of it, but some cameras like the Sony a6300, for example, and the line of a6000 cameras that Sony have actually output a lower quality 1080. The 1080 image quality that you receive from these cameras aren't just worse than 4K because it's 1080, but it's actually worse than other cameras that shoot in 1080. Now, is this footage unusable completely? Of course not, you can still use it. But for a while, I wondered why sometimes I might not be happy with the footage that I shot with this camera, but I could never figure out why. Once I learned about this little quirk with these cameras, I avoided 1080 as much as I possibly could with them. Not all cameras do this. In fact, I think most cameras don't do this. And there are some cameras where the 1080 video just looks spectacular. This is just a quirk that are in some cameras. I would do some research on your specific camera to see if yours has this issue. It may not be an issue that you come across, but I think it's something worth being aware of. And then the next reason is if you need to crop in. The great benefit of shooting 4K is the extra pixels. Unlike in movies where you see someone click the enhance button and the image magically zooms in and somehow becomes even clearer, this is far from reality. Pixels actually limit the size that you can blow up an image before it becomes blurry and unclear. This is because you're stretching and enlarging the pixels bigger than they're made to go. The reason 4K is beneficial is because if you have a 1080 video project with a 4K clip, that 4K clip is being placed inside of a 1920 by 1080 pixel area so with its 4K pixels, it has more than enough pixels to spare. So you can enlarge an image up to 100% and still have a clear image. This is because you basically crop in on that 4K image until the amount of pixels left in the cropped area is 1920 by 1080, the exact amount the video project allows. This can be useful if you need to adjust the size, crop, or rotation of a video clip after shooting it. You may wanna do this for multiple reasons, like reframing the image, avoiding jump cuts, or just to keep the video visually interesting. So for the most part, my advice is shoot 1080 and then use 4K when you think you need to. I hope now you have a better understanding of the difference between 1080 and 4K and when you want to use them. 
reach out if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully that was beneficial to you and you learned something from that. Uh, if you did, I'd love to know what you learned and if you got any value from it. If you're interested in checking out the full training where I break down everything you need to know in order to shoot high quality video for your church, you can click the first link in the description below to check that out. And this training course is not only beneficial for shooting testimony videos and highlight videos and things like that, but it's also directly applicable to live streams because basically what you're doing is recording a video in real time and uploading that to the internet. So if you're having trouble dialing in your settings for your live stream your footage is overexposed and and too bright or you're having trouble getting good colors out of your camera then this course will help explain everything you need to know and you'll be able to get better higher quality live streams because you'll understand how your cameras work and be able to adjust your settings correctly to get the best looking image out of your camera if you have any additional questions feel free to leave them in the comments below i'd love to hear from you also you can go ahead and subscribe because we'll be making more videos like this helping church leaders get the tools and resources they need to become effective with digital media anyway with that being being said, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.